you go to three straight Final Fours uh, while you're at Duke. Um, what what was that like? I mean, I got to one. I thought you know we did something kind of cool. What, well, what was it like to get to three of them? Yeah, we. My freshman year, we lost to Indiana, who ended up winning the national championship. And we learned some things that year. Mm-hmm. And then you know, my sophomore year, we had a lot of returners back. Danny Fair, Quinn Snyder, had a decent freshman class, Billy Kate, Kevin Strickland. So we were we had a good depth and good talent. I thought we had a chance to make some noise. And, you know, that year went well. You know, you know it, it's weird because, you know, you, we – we it was the norm to win 25 games 25 to 30 games and run to get to the final four that that became the norm yeah yeah for sure and uh you know we had some great experiences that one one of the things i wish i could have done though is i started, i was cleaning the other day like i found two of my final four rings and i was like man this would be great for me to have been a national championship ring mm-hmm, because, uh, mm-hmm. and one of the things coach k says that in fact at the care academy is you know once you're a champion you're a champion forever Mm-hmm. And that is so true, but uh, you know we, you know I think we did our part to keep the legacy going. Absolutely, uh, to attract the, the next group of guys that came in at Grant Hill and Thomas Hill and those guys and and uh, Bobby Hurley, Bill McCaffrey. Those so you know, I think we did our part. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, you guys were right in your class was right in that mix of. <clears throat> where do you know you could kind of see it becoming what it ended up becoming um right. did you i don't know could you feel a change happening in you know while you were there or was it just like you know business as usual you know we're just going out and trying to win games well, no it wasn't business as usual then because yeah. that that class of uh 83 really put duke on the map mm-hmm. uh so but the bar had been set and we knew what the expectations were. Yeah. And, you know, Coach K is great with setting expectations and, and helping you understand how we're going to get there. That's that, that's that military background. A lot of people won't understand that unless you understand the military. Yeah. But, uh, you know, chain of command and all those things. So it was, it was a great experience. Uh, it was fun and, like I said, like the discipline didn't bother me because my dad was a drill sergeant. Yeah. <laughs> and so it wasn't nothing. You know, my, my dad used to, he would want me to figure out what he was saying before he finished saying it <laughs> and already start doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, that's the kind of household I grew up in. So I was used to that kind of environment. Yeah. Um, so, like, I talked to um, Kenny Denard. I, I saw that, man. It looks, that's like, you really set the bar low. I was like, listen, <laughs> I can't fail on this day right here. If you start out with Kenny, I, I watched some of it. <laughs> yeah, I was chatting with Kenny, and he was kind of there. Be- he was there before, um, you know, the rise started. Right. And so, you know, he, when he was there, uh, you know, in and around Durham, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't quite the fanfare that there is now. What was it like while you were there? Um, especially as you're going through this this run of you know multiple Final Fours um, around Durham, and did you feel like you could you know you could feel the city start to love you guys a little more? Oh yeah. Well, again, they came off the national championship loss mm-hmm. in the uh, spring of '86, so there was a lot of momentum already built that had already built built up, and so we we got to ride that wave. Now we had to produce, but we yeah. had to ride that wave. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it was great because, you know, Christian Lakeman comes in two years behind me, get to play with him and, you mm-hmm. know, and Grant Hill comes in after. I'm so you see a continual influx of talent and, you know, not just talent, but, but good guys. You know, one thing that I love about getting to know some of the older guys, and some of the younger guys is, you know, just good and good guys, you know, and you want to be, and you want to surround yourself with good people. Yeah. And uh, so Durham really embraced us. We had a great time and the, and the students and the, were amazing. Matter of fact, when I mentioned earlier, we used to ride up and watch them play when I was in high school. 
So one of my first games, we come, we go see them play Notre Dame in the spring. It was a non-conference game in the spring for some reason. And Notre Dame was ranked like number 10. They had David Rivers. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, amazing game. So we pull up and they've got tents everywhere. Yeah. Now this was, this is before, this is, before they put a lot of regulations in place. So it was it was kind of not the Wild West, but it was <laughs> a lot more free spirited back then. Yeah, for day. sure, for sure. So we pull up, we see portable hot tubs. <laughs> Kids grilling out, ordering <laughs> pizza, throwing fruit. And I'm and they're drinking kegs of beer. And I was like, this is college? <laughs> I was like, hmm, duly noted. I'm gonna... <laughs> and so so hey, a couple of my buddies were they, like they and so we got back and they were like, what are we going to hear? <laughs> <laughs> and it became a thing. We went to as many games as we could because it's, uh, you know, we got to probably in February, our season had ended. Yeah. And uh, so we got to catch some of the Duke uh, last few games and then uh, ACC tournament on up to the national championship. So that was, uh, that was a, a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the crazies and, Kenny has some good stories for us about the crazies back then. What were they like uh, in, in your tenure? Were they crazy? Oh God! So <laughs> we that say that first trip where we see all the portable hot tubs. We walk in the gym. We get there a little early. They're what games they're playing? NC State and one of the state uh, Char, um, Lorenzo Charles had gotten in trouble for beating mm-hmm. up a pizza guy. Yeah. So we walk in the gym. They're throwing tennis. This, the teams haven't even come out yet. They're throwing mm-hmm. tennis balls back and forth across the gym. It's like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> State comes out, warm up, warm up, warm up. <laughs> they go to the benches. They do the starting lineups. They announce Lorenzo Charles. Mm-hmm. And on cue, they start flinging pizza boxes oh my onto the floor. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, what? And that wasn't the most impressive thing about it was on cue, a cleanup crew came out there like a NASCAR <laughs> pit crew and got, I mean, I'm telling you, they, they, I guess they knew it was going to happen. Yeah. And they went out there and bam, and cleaned them up. Uh, and then the second time they played state, they were, state got, uh, they were, uh, they had been selling their shoes that they had gotten from the athletic department. Mm-hmm. So the shoes came so the second time they play, they announced the lineup. They throw shoes on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I love this place. <laughs> I gotta go here. So the crazies were indeed crazy. They were crazy. So that was, uh, of course, high school. But then, you know, it, it kind of calmed down because, you know, they had to put some regulations in yeah, place. Yeah, it but, needed uh, to calm down. Yeah, but they were, still, they were still great. I mean, loud, yeah. obnoxious, you know, so they were, they were phenomenal. 